For years, the city of Trotwood has been known as a food desert, an area with limited access to healthy and nutritious food. But a $7 million project to build a new grocery store is ending that. Gwyneth Falloon is following this story for us. Joining us now live. Now, Gwen, what exactly are you able to tell us about this exciting new project? Well, Lise, I am currently standing on the site of what will be the brand new 52,000 square foot supermarket. You can tell it's still under construction, but right now the Trotwood community only has limited access, excuse me, some tra to food. Some are traveling 15, even 20 minutes to get their grocery shopping done. They're hoping that this will help reduce transportation costs in addition to the new supermarket being right across from the RTA. Now they're planning on still selling wholesale, but they're also going to have things like a deli, fresh produce, meat and dairy products. So they're increasing access to not just food, but healthy and nutritious food as well. With being a food desert and a lot of seniors in our community, a lot of kids in our community, we've seen high incidence of diabetes, high blood pressure, many, many things that plague uh, the community. Much of that is, is traced right back to not having accessibility to good and healthy food into the community. Now, in addition to uh, increasing the access to food, city leaders are hoping that a larger store means an increased need for employees. So they're hoping that this will increase the number of job opportunities here in the Trotwood area and help keep workers local. Back to you. I looked the officer and uh, his beautiful four month old baby and I said, look at your child. This child is not growing up fatherless and that is the most important part. Sigh of relief today for the officer who was shot and injured while pursuing three robbery suspects on I-70 yesterday. But now Columbus police, they're still on the lookout for one of those suspects who's still at large. Another suspect taken into custody earlier today for his alleged involvement, and he has not been formally charged, at least not yet. His identity also not released. Deputy Chief Greg Bodker wanted to give praise to those officers who risk their lives to protect the public. The officers put themselves in between violence felons and innocent people that were merely on the freeway. And so every one of those officers is a hero, uh, including this officer's partner, who quickly assessed the situation and very quickly got this officer to Grant Hospital. Columbus Mayor Andrew Ginther took time this morning to ask for the public's help. This as officers continue to search for the last of the three suspects. I want everybody in this community to consider a contribution the Crime Stoppers. We believe that we need more tips and information to hold all of these folks accountable for shooting at and injuring and trying to kill police officers. Now, Whitehall police say they do plan to charge someone with aggravated robbery in connection with the stolen Porsche once all the suspects have been identified. As we learn anything new, we'll keep you updated on air and online. Tonight, this man here behind me is now behind bars after police say he rammed a cruiser and led officers on a chase late last night. Police tell us they tried to pull over 45 year old Dolly Jacks Brown for suspicious activity at West Stewart Street. That's when Brown rammed the cruiser and took off. And that's according to police. Now he's now in custody, facing several charges, including felonious assault and resisting arrest. No officers were hurt. Now we have an update to a shooting we told you about last night is breaking news. An 18 year old arrested after searching that area of Lake Bend Drive where that shooting took place. Police say when they got there, they found a 22 year old victim. She was taken to the hospital with non life threatening injuries. That investigation remains ongoing. Tonight, the Montgomery County Coroner asking for your help in identifying the remains found in the Great Miami River a week ago. Now this here that we're about to show you is an artist sketch of a distinct tattoo that covered the person's entire back. It appears to be a sword. If you've seen this before and know what it means or who this tattoo could belong to, you're asked to please call the Montgomery County Coroner's Office. That number 937-225-4156. Well, happy Friday. You did it. We made it to the weekend and it looks like we're going to have a little bit of a mixed bag. We got a little bit of sun, a little bit of rain, but Saturday is looking pretty good, right? Yeah, I mean, Saturday we're going to see some rain. It's you hesitated. Start off you good. hesitated. I mean, because we're going to have some rain in there. I mean, it's your summer scenario. You're going to see some muggy weather, which I know you're excited for. But yeah, right now, not really bad when it comes to our muggy meter tolerable. But then tomorrow, Saturday, we're going to see that jump right up, almost 70 degree dew point. So a little sticky. But then once that cold front pushes through the area, we'll see those dew points drop. And the rest of the week looks pretty tolerable. You know, just in between that 60 to 65 dew point mark is that really 
comfortable area you like to stay in in the summertime. So we do have some rain on the way. It's going to push through right around lunchtime tomorrow. I'll talk about that more in the forecast coming up, but it looks to be pretty scattered here. You can see some areas not really receiving much, but then other locations, isolated locations, picking up heavier amounts or have the potential to pick up heavier amounts. And there is a very low end severe risk, a level one out of five from our storm prediction center. So I'll break down what that means in our next forecast. Well, with the nice weather, the downtown Dayton partnership continues their tradition of first Fridays, but this first Friday is also the first with the new expanded Dora. Abby Forbes spoke with the local businesses today. Abby, what did they tell you about what this could mean for them? Yeah, I spoke with a local bar in the expanded Dora and he told me that they've already seen increase in business with this expanded Dora. He told me that about every week they sell about 100 Dora pints. Now he only expects that first Friday will help increase those sales. And Abby, I know or understand I should say that this first Friday also had a theme. So what can you tell us about that? Yeah, so this first Friday's theme was independence and it was all about celebrating those independent businesses downtown. You want to make sure that you are supporting and monetizing the businesses that make your community go round. And so to be able to highlight our local businesses in the downtown and beyond areas is very important to make sure that we keep the dollar in our community. The next first Friday will be August 4th and more information about these events can be found on our website at Dayton247now.com. Back to you. Abby, thank you. Governor Mike DeWine providing an update ahead of the one year anniversary since the launch of Ohio's 988 Suicide and Crisis Lifeline. The governor and other state officials unveiled their new 988 logo, a rollout plan for an outreach campaign, and an update as to how well the soft launch went this past year. So there are now 19 call centers here in Ohio with over 180 in the U.S. that aim to de-escalate crises. Now, over 12,000 calls, texts, and chats are received per month from Ohioans. Over 20,000 trainings have been completed by call specialists, and the newly approved state budget has also provided $46.5 million for the next two years. A 988 administrator tells us the impact the expansion has had. Today, nearly 90% of the calls from Ohioans are being answered in state, which marks a 33% increase from early in 2022 before our call center network was expanded. Our centers are also answering calls very quickly. Ohio has a 19 second speed to answer rate. That compares to the national average of 35 seconds. The 988 system is expected to quickly increase to about 14,000 calls per month once the outreach campaign begins. And again, if you or someone you know is struggling and needs help, do not hesitate to reach out. You are certainly not alone. Simply dial 988. The Lifeline provides 24-7 free and confidential support plus resources for people in distress. You can also chat and text with a crisis counselor. The gunman who killed nearly two dozen people in, te in a Texas Walmart in 2019 will now spend the rest of his life in prison. A judge handed down 90 life sentences. 24 year old Patrick Crucius pled guilty to nearly 50 federal hate crimes. Police say Crucius drove more than 700 miles from his home to target Hispanics in El Paso. Federal prosecutors took the death penalty off the table, but state prosecutors are still seeking capital punishment. I want to emphasize that nothing that happens in the federal courthouse will affect what happens in the state courthouse. We are still going to be prosecuting the Walmart shooter. We are still going to be seeking the death penalty. No date is set yet for that state trial. Today marks Wall Street Journal reporter Evan Gershkovich's 100th day of detainment in Russia. The 31 year old was arrested back in March on espionage charges during a reporting trip in Russia. The newspaper and U.S. officials deny the spying claims and the White House today confirming there have been ongoing discussions about his release and other detained Americans. But National Security Advisor Jake Sullivan says he doesn't want to spread false hope. I cannot stand here today and tell you that we have a clear answer to how we are going to get Evan home. All I can do is tell you that we have a clear commitment and conviction that we will do everything possible to bring him home. Gershevich is the first U.S. correspondent since the Cold War to be detained by Russia for alleged spying. University of Dayton issuing an alert earlier today about a data incident that impacted the university. Lydia Bice is at the now desk. So, Lydia, who exactly is this impacting? 
Yeah, some undergraduate and graduate, graduate students were affected because their records were accessed. In a news release on Friday, UD said that it was made aware of a third-party data incident involving two of its major service providers. The National Student Clearinghouse informed the university that this happened because of vulnerability in a third-party software tool that the nonprofit uses called Move It Transfer. UD says the National Student Clearinghouse is investigating and working with law enforcement. Now, the university is providing tips for students to keep their personal information safe, right? Yes, the university is telling students to stay alert for phishing scams, monitor all financial accounts, consider using fraud alerts or freezing your credit, and always update passwords. Back to you. Lydia, thank you. Well, nearly 200-year-old apartment building getting a makeover. A look at the progress and the repairs now underway. Also, the Canadian wildfires causing problems in much of the U.S. Why fire officials say they could continue burning for the next few months. And dry right now, but we do have some rain on the way and some low in severe potential. I'll time it all out in your full forecast coming up. Here's a look at your Eco Plumber Skycam. You're watching Dayton 24-7 now. In Claremont County, a nearly 200-year-old Felicity apartment building getting a makeover. Two women were evacuated over fears it could collapse. And tonight, Luke Jones tells us what building inspectors found in the temporary housing that is now set up for the women. Repairmen kept busy at this Felicity apartment building Friday after Audrey and Linda McMillan fled their second-floor unit, fearing the building was structurally unstable. I'm not going to stay somewhere 
that I am not safe. The hole in the kitchen floor is now gone. So are the holes in the entryway ceiling. The wiggling wall we showed you wiggles no more. They put an extra brace in it. The Claremont County Building Department confirms inspectors were here Friday and found no issues with the building. Its investigation is now closed, but that does little to ease Linda McMillan's mind. They want to just barely patch everything and not do it right. The building manager tells us she's done everything she can to make things right, and she's providing these notes to back up that claim. She says Wednesday was the first time she learned of the hole in the kitchen floor. These documents note a maintenance man tried twice to enter the apartment, but that no one was home. The manager is also claiming these holes in the ceiling weren't there on Wednesday. The McMillans insist they were there when they moved in last month. And now, even with repairs made... You still don't feel safe going back in there? No, I do not. In Felicity, Luke Jones. We now know tonight the Canadian wildfires causing problems in much of the U.S. could burn for the next two months. That's according to Canada's Minister of Emergency Preparedness. In fact, they say currently 684 fires are burning throughout the country. 339 of those are considered out of control and weather is playing a big part in that. Drought conditions, when coupled with above normal temperatures across most of the country, means that the risk of fire activity is going to remain very high throughout the majority of the summer. Now Canada plans to train 1,000 new firefighters to help fight these wildfires. All right, now clear conditions and skies right now. A couple clouds moving in on our west, even a few drops of rain up towards Peru. But pulling out, you can see this entire flank of moisture right here. This is going to be moving towards us, uh, bringing us the chance for some rain after we get some clouds in the morning. But moving through time right here, you can see that clouds in the morning by 6 a.m. Moisture starts building through the area right around lunchtime. So 1, 2 p.m. we'll start to see this front push through the area. Temperatures dropping slightly behind it before picking back up again, which will give us that chance for a couple of afternoon storms and showers to pop up isolated across the region. But otherwise, the day is going to start nice. We're going to have some push of heavy moisture that will exit quickly. And the rest of the day, you'll have a mix of clouds and sun, maybe some showers in certain areas, but not a complete all day rain event. By Sunday morning, cloud cover starting, maybe a few isolated showers lingering through the area, but through the day Sunday, clearing out and by your evening, plenty of sunshine to end your weekend. The president ending a Trump era regulation on short term health coverage. Companies are now no longer allowed to sell, quote, junk insurance for longer than four months. Today, my administration is closing these surprise, surprise billing loopholes. Evading the law and playing games to charge pays and outraging prices has to end. It has to end. Now, Biden says short term health plans are only supposed to provide coverage for people as they transition from one source of coverage to another, like if they're in between jobs. And we are seven weeks out from the premier debate of the 2024 GOP primary, but so far there's only one candidate who we know for sure will be there. I'll be there regardless. Um, I hope everybody who's eligible comes. I think it's an important part of the process. Other than Florida Governor Ron DeSantis, former President Donald Trump says he's considering boycotting and holding a competing event instead. And the rest of the candidates are pushing back on a requirement by the Republican National Committee that no matter who gets nominated, they must support the eventual candidate. In other words, they don't want to support Trump. I can't lie to get access to a microphone. I'm not going to support uh, Donald Trump. I recognize the impact that it has on, on, on you know, my ability to get access mm -hmm. to the debate stage, but I, I can't lie. Now, some candidates are also struggling to meet the RNC's requirement of having at least 40,000 individual donors and earning at least 1% in national polls. Former President Donald Trump taking shots at two different opponents for the White House. He was speaking in Iowa today and took the chance to talk about some of the President Biden's policies. Within hours of my inauguration, I will cancel every Biden policy that is brutalizing our farmers in our country. 
It's not clear what Trump is referencing exactly, but last month the EPA rolled out a plan increasing biofuels into the nation's gas supply while holding the ethanol blend steady, disappointing many farm advocates. During the same speech, the former president railed against Florida Governor Ron DeSantis as well. Every Iowan also needs to know that Ron DeSantis totally despises Iowa ethanol and ethanol generally. He's been fighting for years. Don't forget, he was a congressman and he was voting against it and fighting for years to kill every single job supported by this very important industry. As a congressman, DeSantis co-sponsored a bill that would have ended the standard, a position many conservatives hold. Here's a live look from the Troy traffic camera tonight. Beautiful night in downtown Troy. Uh, if you do step outside, though, we got to warn you, it is a bit muggy. We can confirm by being out on the Watson's weather patio right now. Uh, Tim is in for Natalie. So what do we got uh, on tap for the weekend here? Yeah, I mean, it's going to get muggy again. It's okay. not terrible now. It's going to get a little bit more muggy tomorrow, a uh, little bit of rain, a little bit of sunshine, typical summertime. So can we so get any yard stuff done tomorrow, you think? Uh, maybe in the first thing in the morning, but right okay. now, uh, <laughs> temperatures in the 70s going to be mild. It's going to be around that in the morning as well. 64 out in Richmond, 74 in Dayton, and 68 down in Middletown. Now, compared to this time yesterday, Middletown and Wilmington, seven degrees cooler than they were this time yesterday. Richmond, five degrees. And for the next five days, we're going to be right near where we should be tomorrow before that cold front pushes through and drops us down just a few degrees, but it'll definitely suppress that humidity a little bit. And then on, excuse me, Sunday, we'll have temperatures in the low 80s, so well below our average of 86 for this time of year. But through the week, things will climb back up to where they're supposed to be in the mid to upper 80s. A woman selling her artwork to meet her favorite person. Coming up, a recount of her experience meeting Johnny Depp. You're watching Dayton 24-7 now.
Well, we have a sweet update this evening. You may remember this woman, Carol Balzer, who we featured a few months ago. She was raising money by selling her artwork to meet her favorite person, Johnny Depp. Well, as you can see there, she did it, and she sat down with reporter Melena Brown today to share that experience. This was truly a dream come true for Carol. She told me she has loved Johnny Depp since 1987. Back in March, she was selling artwork of the famous actor to raise money to take a trip to see him in concert in Austria. Well, she just got back and tells me it was incredible. Carol and her caretaker, Zante, made the 11-hour flight from Dayton to Austria earlier this month. And once they were there, it was off to a meet and greet where Carol had a life-changing experience. He gave me a hug. And he kissed me on both cheeks and my hands. She was able to raise $1,000 selling her one-of-a-kind artwork. And she's still creating unique pieces, so if you're interested in buying one, you can check out her website here. It's called carolk.biz, and you can see all of the different artwork that she has available. Back to you. The Cincinnati Reds kicking off a big division series against the Milwaukee Brewers. We're going to give you an update on how that one is shaping out next. You're watching Dayton 24-7 now.